Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron for the New Order as the Siberian National State under the Vosd, Konstantin Vladimirovich Radzevsky. Last episode we knocked out the Central Siberian Unifier and secured all of Central Asia. This episode I think will be largely a build-up episode because it's yeah, it's December of 69. We can't attack them till, you know, you know, March or April of 71. So we've got a good bit to go until um until we can get cracking into the disagreement with uh the, the Russian unifier. Well, see, this is my problem. That's Western Russia. That's Western Siberia. But, like, when they combine, they get, like, they get their, you know, their full name, like, like Russian Republic or Republic of Russia or Russian National Reclamation Government. Whereas we have to do, do like, the extra step. There needs to be different names, like, like, Provisional Commissariat of Western Russia and Western Siberia or something like that. Anyway, the dawn of a new Russia. Modify Russian bundle of sticks. Stronghold by daily political power gain plus 0 0.05. And stability plus 5%. That's one of our original modifiers. Yes, indeed. Mm. Now, now that the party has once more been purified and the political side of the all-Russian government has been dealt with, the party pacified the Vosged lieutenants, reminded of their place. There comes a new era in Russian history. The dawn of Russia, unadulterated by small hats, reds, and those who seek to harm the Russian nation. The Vosged has announced the beginning of a new stage in the Russian bundle of sticks party's so-called reclamation of Russia. In a speech entitled The Dawn of a New Russia, he, outli he outlined that the final traitors and threats to his rule have been rooted out and dealt with, and while the Russian people toil onwards, he has begun planning for the final step in national reunification. Like all of his speeches, it ended with the RFP's infamous motto for God, Nation, and Labour. Fantastic. To repair that, Turkmenistan, a civilian factory. I'm incredibly happy with, um... How well our infrastructure is developing in our Vyatka series. We are just blowing through it nicely. Also, I managed to get Fallout 3 to run, which I'm very happy about. I have to play it in windowed mode, which isn't ideal. And for some reason, I'm not able to, like, bring up Spotify or, or like, uh, Brave or Google, like, while I'm using the app. Which is annoying. Or rather, yeah, it, it's, it, it is annoying. But it's offset by the fact that, of course, you have Galaxy News Radio on Fallout 3, which is a fantastic radio station. Now, did we get an event for that one? No. Now... Gets when the prodigal son, our academic base societal development will begin to improve. There is only one vision for the future of Russia, one vision that is worth talking about, and that vision is of the Vojt, Konstantin Radzevsky. He knows the way forward for Russia, and to doubt him would be tantamount to the betrayal of the Russian state. Thus, any true Russian would know that they should be united in vision, the Vojt's vision, which will forge the way forward for a strong and independent Russia, one that is free from the tyranny of the red and the oppression of the small hat. Of course, all true Russians would think this, but it is, it, but it is important to make sure that they are reminded of this. In our new territories, the Vojt's works shall be distributed, and made mandatory and made mandatory reading so that all can understand the importance of the Vajd mission. Fantastic. Did we just core all of that? Almost. 41.9 million people. Fantastic. Tajikistan is the last one left. Now. Only 76. That's fine. That's fine. Put that up there. 76 military factories. And how many civilians? Four full rows. That'll do. Victory no man. Ah, how informative, yes. <clears throat> now, we've come so far. The prodigal son. The number of arrests has de have decreased. Vajd, it's my Vajd or your Vajd. Yeah, yeah, my Vajd. Don't say to say Vajd. The tireless efforts of my men have led to a general decrease in subversive activity and the agitators have made their presence hidden for fear of our retribution. We are well armed from the industry of Central Siberia and have preparations uh, for the war and preparations for the war for the disagreement for the West have begun. Rodzevsky was unimpressed. You're sure. What basis do you have for this, Shekharev? The number of arrests have decreased. Reports of anti-state thought in the ranks are decreasing from the small numbers they were, al they were already at. Our reign is becoming more secure every day. Alexander Baltov said nothing as the black shirt leader continued to extol his, his successes. Patience was critical for the Vosh had little to spare these days, even for his most trusted advisors. Then why are you focusing your efforts on internal matters, or have you forgotten there is a uh, disagreement to fight? The enemy no longer lies within, if you have done your job properly. Silence reigned over the office before a whisper from the Vajd. Have you done your job, Georgi? Shakarev stammered for a moment before Radzevsky interrupted again. Get me a report on the state of our armed forces, now. A hastily stammered aff affirmation and a hasty exit later, Balatov and the Vajd were alone. He still thinks we are in the old days, Alexander. Um... Wait, what? Oh, right, this is Rodzewski talking, of course. The enemy, I, I was going to say, at first I was thinking, you dare refer to the Vajd and, like, as his first name, and then I thought, his first name is Constantin, that doesn't work. And then I was thinking, oh, um, but no. 
Oh, yeah, 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 this, yeah, this is the Vosh talking, never mind. The enemy within has been beaten down and cannot hope to dislodge us. The enemy to the west is a false and weak pretended to leadership of the Russian people, but even farther west, the German claims a legacy of national, of uh, Hackenkreuzism. Um, which they do not deserve. Their pathetic attempts to uphold their facade will fall, uh, will fail in the face of the true heirs. The exiles return at the point of a sword. Plus 10 political power, plus 2.5% base war sword, change of popularity of hacking courts is 5%. Yeah, the exiles return at the point of a sword about 30 years ago. Well, no, not 30 years ago, but, uh, yeah, 20. Yeah, 20-ish. Yeah, 25. Now, good hospital too. We are working, uh, we are working on maintenance companies, aren't we? Yes, we are. Good. And we've integrated them into our divisions? Yes, good. Field hospitals, there we are. Do we have enough support equipment? We well, might not. We're short 330, um, 329 now, yeah. That's bad. Very bad. Hmm. Might uh, take a rain check on those. Seven. Yeah, seven fours. That's kind of Get more, um. Get more support equipment. Stat. There we are. Now, we've come so far, gets about retracing our steps from the darkest days of the Vos residence at Zaya to the conquest of the Splitters and Reds until now as the free all-Russian army parades down the streets of Novosibirsk. The Russian bundle of sticks party has done well for itself. Some even whispered the Vos himself was surprised, if not happy, about all of what he and his administration has, have accomplished. There's still plenty to do, but there's also plenty to celebrate. The Vos has already begun forging a free, strong and independent Russia. It's important to reflect back upon all that Konstantin Rodzewski has done for his people. Now, decrease the debt. There we are. Very good. We've almost wiped it out. Are you all training up? Do you need to train up? Yes, you do. Now, retracing our steps. How did we get here? This question had been on the mind of the Vaj for days. He had grown up amidst, amidst violence in Blagoveshensk and fled from his home at 18. Now, after nearly 50 years of struggle, he had returned. He had thought that he would return in chains after betrayal by the Japanese or Red sympathizers or sold out by his own like that traitor Matkovsky, but instead he returned to Caesar at the head of an army of the true. He still fondly remembered the, day, the years in Harbin, waiting for an opportunity, sniffing out traitors and small hats to give them what they deserved, but age had dulled his desire for such indulgences and the wild ambience of Harbin had given way to the former um, Red Party headquarters in Novosibirsk. The bitter cold of desolate Zaya had left as well, and the warmth of a heated office gave his, age, uh, gave his aged body comfort in his duties. The struggles of those uh, they, days, 40 years in exile, made him stronger, and those who served with him, Balatov, that violent and unpredictable sycophant, who had also grown into an effective soldier for Hackenkreuzism during years of hard living. Yes, it was the exile that separated the ones who would remain true to Hackenkreuzism from the self-serving power seekers, the petlins of the world, the bastards who had set him back years, stolen his woman, and wasted thousands of Russian lives in a futile struggle against the inevitable rise of the one Vajd. The struggle would have to continue uh, for Russia to survive. The mewling of the cat interrupted his thoughts, and the Vajd took it into his arms, stroking its soft fur as he thought of coming victories. And what of the future? Now, with so much left to do, gets vent an empty glass. Even if we recognise how far the Russian bundle of sticks party has come, it's still not enough. To our west lay the uh, small hat puppets and red remnants. Further than them are the perfidious Germans, themselves little more than a broken people clinging to a system they refuse to admit that they have failed in maintaining. The Vaj's work is cut out from, and by extension the people of Russia have their work cut out for them. The unification of our motherland is paramount, and the crossing of the Urals will be no small task. And beyond our unification lays the, ne lays the next great challenge. Germany, we shall not waver, we shall not rest. Our purpose, almost fatalistic in its inevitability, is to restore the lost glory of, uh, to our motherland for God, nation, and labour. Fantastic. 444,000 men. We have tank division in training, do we not? We do another 10. 24 stack is what we'll need at minimal. We'll probably go into Germany with at least 48, yeah. Uh, more divisions are here. Another 15 infantry divisions. Fantastic. Nikolai Kosov. Nikolai Kosov. Now. We'll get another 10 that'll fill out that. We need another... Um, yeah, another 9. Another 10 infantry divisions. At least. Maybe we'll make them all 40 with. Now, that should um, set us up nicely. You're probably all sort of... No, you're all sort of uh, support equipment. Interesting. So I can really cut back on the um, artillery. Good. 
We'll be getting even more factory soon. Now an empty glass. The ministers had assembled, discussion had been had, preparations had been made, and at the end of it all, long into the night, the Vosges stood alone in the conference room, overlooking the table. Typed documents cluttered the surface of the table, outlining troop movements and supply lines, but the Vosges had given his attention to the map. The borders of old Russia picked at by the vultures of Japan and above all Germany. The western weaklings would fall first, then Moscovine and the borders would be restored, and then perhaps they would march farther and show the German degenerates how far they had fallen from the true path. The Vosges grasped the bottle by his side, opened it with practice ease, and then... <coughs> His thoughts raced, memories of a half century in exile, the battles of the reunification wars, the end of the traitor Matkovsky, and knowledge of what he needed, strength. He had been a weakened cripple, relying on the crutches of other, of other bundle of sticks people and alcohol to make it here, and as he had advanced, they had been kicked away by him one by one. Matkovsky, the traitor. Oh, Wilson, wait, Wilson's been elected? It said elected, not re-elected, which means that first they have they had Jellico. Is that gonna bug you out? That's gonna be weird. Hmm. Interesting. That's yeah, that's weird. Now, where was I? The violent thug Shekarov and Bolotov. Shekarov isn't the violent thug. He wants to professionalize the party, um, and just yeah, he, he wants to get rid of the thuggish days of power, but not not continue them. That's Bolotov. And now this destructive, pitiable habit had become unnecessary. All self-doubt had left his mind. Traitors would quell before him and not dare to enact their plots. The army of the true would obey his command, marching to Moscow and maybe even onwards. The Vosd stood alone, unflinching and imperious. The bottle gave a solid clink as he forcefully set it upon the table and screwed the cap back on. Not today. In the name of the Vajd, we advance. Change in popularity of Hackenkreuzism, 2.5%. Fantastic. Ah, we're fully Hackenkreuzism. Fantastic. 100% party popularity for the RFP. Glorious. How goes it, Zykov? You winning? Losing? How many men do you have? You have a lot of men. But then again, so does Omsk. I reckon that'll drag out. Omsk is making gains, but they're hard fought. Lots of casualties, I'd imagine. Then again, Zykov's taking losses as well, as far as I remember. The Ural disagreement. Now let's pop those boosts again. There we are. Decrease the debt. Now the Ural disagreement. 190 to 237. Interesting. Ooh, casualties are racking up, though. Oh, never mind. <laughs> the lag spike hit. I was wondering, what happened to your casualties? Why, are they, why have they suddenly stopped? Ah, uh, see, if, um, if Zykov can hold and not push... He will be doing very well for himself, because Omsk will just, um, they'll just bleed themselves out. But if he keeps pushing, then Omsk will definitely uh, win. Ooh, the Arabian Republic, you always love to see him. Has Iraq kicked off yet? No. Good job, Arabia. Oh god, I think I think Zykov might maybe putting the ball in Omsk's in a in Yazov's Oh excuse me, I think Omsk or um I think yeah uh what was I saying? I think what's his face? Can't remember his name. Zykov. I think Zykov may be putting the ball in Yazov's uh, corner if he keeps up these attacks, which are unsustainable. Yeah, look 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 at the difference. Like provisional commissary of Western Russia. Had like 125 factories there. They keep losing more. Like imagine how many they had at the start before they started losing land. My Siberian industry superior my whole. Use your superior industry to conquer Western Russia. No, that's not happening. Now you can be training up actually. With the atomic age. Ooh. With the atomic age. Pop all that. I forgot to read that. No. I think the old. Um, is it out? I don't remember hearing a lot of it. <coughs> no. In the atomic age, Russia has long been regarded by powers near and far as a backwater vast step full of peasant farmers and decades of revolution collapse and civil war has done little to challenge this perception, but this will soon change with the resources, human and otherwise, that we have acquired during our campaigns of reunification, we possess the ability to begin a nuclear program. The power of the atom is a great equaliser in the game of geopolitics and we shall now act to harness it for ourselves. See, I believe the entire nuclear tree 
should be moved until after the second West Russian disagreement has either been won or lost. It's ridiculous that you can just crack into... Oh, all right, lads, grand job. We've secured roughly half of Russia geographically. Let's crack into the nuclear program. Now, increases theoretical development by progress by 5% and monthly progress gain by 1%. Krasnoyarsk gets one piece of infrastructure. We have a free uh, research slot over here. Probably gets 70s industry. Yeah. Anyway. Now, just as we are desperate to unlock the secrets of the atom, our enemies are equally desperate to prevent us from doing so. Although they're... Oh, fantastic. Ah, sorry about that. Now. Um... Although there are many ways to increase security, very few are absolute, and absolute security is necessary when these stakes are so high. We will therefore sequester our entire nuclear program, laboratories, enrichment facilities, reactors, and production lines in closed cities. These cities will not permit entry or exit to anyone without direct authorization from the highest levels of government. Although cumbersome and expensive such is irrelevant, we must have safety and security for the program, and we will. Fantastic. Ooh, 774,000 in the field. 207,000 in training and another 345,000 in reserve. We are doing very, very well for ourselves. And 44.2 million core population. Lovely. Well, I did that. Never mind. Never mind. I think it'll actually just get you off the front lines while... Um, well, the disagreements are ongoing. I hope they're. I hope they've got everything wrapped up by the time that we come knocking, because um, that'd be good. Oh, nice bike! Come on, let's go. There we are. Now, pause that. Let's drop a fallback line, roughly from here. Let's just go all the way across. Here. There we are. Everyone get on that fallback line. For no particular reason either. Just looks nice. There we are. Thank you. Now, foundation for research. Increases theoretical development progress by 15% and monthly progress gain by 3%. Our research facility societal development will begin to improve. More than 20 years of civil war has, among other many among many other things, all but destroyed the educational infrastructure of the nation and led to the emigration or death of most competent scientists and physicists. If we are to have any hope of continuing and completing our nuclear program, we must address this. We cannot wait for skilled scientists to make themselves known or return from afar, or for advanced in institutes to be reclaimed. We must act. We will directly fund the universities and research centers that we do have and monitor them closely for students of loyalty and aptitude who can be directly recruited into our development program. Fantastic. Fantastic indeed. We're all getting on this random fallback line. 774,000 of us. Glorious. Ooh, more divisions. Lovely. Tank divisions? Yes, tank divisions. But why is there only one after deploying? Because I was training up by 10. That's kind of worrying. Where are the rest of our tank divisions? They're not even close to being ready. Interesting. I guess the artillery deficit kind of knocked them back a few. Are we all good on resources, not importing anything that we shouldn't be, are we? Come on. Let's go. Let's go, leg spike. There we are. No, we're all good. All good. Ah, there we are. There's the tank divisions, I was gonna say. What the hell are they? Oh, but now... Did, did I have that on Unlimited? No, I didn't. There's just two more. Oh, so that's, that, that was the um, infantry I was looking at. Yeah, the tank, tank divisions are nearly ready. Good, good, good. Eight hundred fifty-nine thousand. Very nice. What's your org? Thirty. <laughs> just thirty. Perfect. That's kind of what you generally want, unless you unless your assault tax is insane and you've got a lot of supply. How is our societal development doing? I can't believe I didn't get the poverty rate up. 
And I'm not gonna either. Even if I was here till 1975, which is when um, the West Russian War Mod is deciding to, um, like, uh, like usually the way it is currently, like it, it has to be after 1971, and um, you have obviously have unified all of Russia, and you can just go for Germany whenever you want. But they're changing it to 1975, which, it, which is very, very realistic. Um, they also removed uh, Vyborg from the um, from the Winter War, which is good because we just. Uh, well, I'd say we just, you know, we've kind of um, finished our first two series where we did get Vyborg. Well, I say we finished our, you know, we, in our two series so far, as we had to get Andamur, we got, um, we got Vyborg before the changes were made, which I'm pretty happy about. See some more. Oh, not very long. Good. Address the uranium problem. Increase material procurement progress by 5% and monthly progress gain by 2% at the cost of 150 million US dollars. Russia is a truly enormous land possessing many varied resources in vast abundance. Unfortunately, however, uranium is not one of those as far as we know. Without a steady and reliable supply of uranium, we will have no program and thus no bomb. We must therefore make every effort in order to find the supply as soon as possible. No matter what it costs, we must find new sources of fissile material. Indeed. Of course, one of the reasons the Soviets wanted Czechoslovakia so bad in our own timeline is because at the time, Czechoslovakia had the second best uranium in the world, only after second only to the Belgian Congo. Now, that was at the time, of course. The French had barely any, but then they discovered a good bit and allowed them to get um, a, uh, a decent amount of nuclear weapons out. But at the time, Czechoslovakia was like, yes, more nukes. Lo loads of uh, lovely quality uranium. Now there. I think after that we can just be working on improving our resources. Oh, look at that! Nice! There. 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 There, 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 there. Oh, we won't have, um... Oh, never mind, we do have that cord. Is there a decision for coring Western Mongolia? There must be. should be everything. Nice. Not too much. Maybe gonna decrease all this? Nah, nah. We'll finish the Far Eastern Industrial Plan first. Is that seriously 90% even though there's no resources there? Did Kamchatka, Kamchatka must have built it up. They wouldn't have had any, they would have had barely any civilian factories. It must have been Alexander Men. They wouldn't have had it for that long though. That's weird. That's very weird. Can you take a factory? Because if you get 90% is pretty good. Yeah, five factories wouldn't be bad at all. Yeah, hell yeah. If you can take a factory, why not? I'll bump you up to the top, actually. No. Oh. Found that hits a build. Not long at all. I'll get you down here then. Is that. That's Bratsk. No, that's. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, that is uh, Central Siberia. I'm upgrading that anyway. Good. How many will that be? Seven civilian factories. Mm, ten? No, no. Yeah, a total of seven factories in Camp Chapter. That's not going to be not bad at all. One of them is a dockyard, one of them is a military factory, but that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Come on, lads, but let's go, I'm not even doing that much. Also, why do you have Kamchatka selected? That's weird. Did I select that? I must have. Yeah, yeah, I did. There we go. Casualties? Oh. I'd say Amsk probably has it in the bag now. And not another likes, like, come on, that's ridiculous. I might, I might as well just sit here doing nothing. Oh, 
come on. No big rush. There's the division zone. Very nice. Don't suppose that'd be a million men, would it? 981,000, so close. So close. Also, with the second West Russian War mod, we actually um, get access to intervening to inter intervention in Iran after we've unified, which is fantastic. Very much looking forward to doing that. Grant those casualties again, just keep up there. I suppose I can close that first, can I? I can, fantastic. Look at all these glorious Russian lives just being tossed away by stupid AI. <laughs> uh, 628,000. This, this could eventually result in them just bogging down. Or if Zykov keeps attacking, he'll um, I'm still just sweep up. We are doing the focus, aren't we? Yes, yes, we've almost finished. Good. Now, this one. Expand the Siberian mines, increase material procurement progress by 10% and monthly progress gain by 1% at the cost of 350 million US dollars. We'll get one piece of infrastructure in Krasnoyarsk. And we'll actually now know we'll, we'll get two pieces of infrastructure in Krasnoyarsk. Deep within Siberia lies Krasnoyarsk, although important for other reasons. The region is also notable for possessing vast qualities of uranium deep below the surface. Uranium that we can now exploit in order to properly do so. An entire mining operation and the infrastructure surrounding it will have to be built from scratch. The effort required will be enormous and the cost even greater, but such is irrelevant. We must have that uranium, indeed. If you don't know what's just happened, this is what um, it, um this country, the Amur Refuge, Refugee Zone, has the exact same tag as um of obviously Rodzewski's regime, AMR. Um and because there was an update recently to Hearts of Iron 4 to help improve the multiplayer, for some reason it's messing with base the new order. Um I saw the the notification on Discord uh, for the second West Russian war mod. Oh no. I'm going to reload to the 1st of June 1970. God, I hope this nothing goes wrong. If something does go wrong, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply annex the other two before um, before that fires and also just annex all the land from Germany as well. Wasn't expecting that to happen. Like, like when they said that it was buggy, I just assumed, oh, you know, events won't fire. You know, like you know, things might, like things that shouldn't happen, or that um, should happen, won't happen. Like I know, uh, civil wars or like the oil crisis. I didn't expect to completely switch tags. Alright, we're back with the national state. Let's pop a save just in um, just in case we accidentally go over the tick or just in case it happens again. God, that better not keep happening. That's gonna be infuriating if it does. Maybe something I did? Did I click something? Not sure. I don't think so. Motorized equipment, we're not missing trucks, are we? 
going to be bad. Means we'd have to start production of a of a new item from scratch. That'd be bad. That would be very bad. Come on, Max. Let's go. Two hundred and three fractures. Very nice. Uh, trucks. No, we're not. <laughs> we aren't even close to being short of trucks. We've got ten and a half thousand of the damn things. We still get stuff from uh, Japan, like artillery and stuff. No, we can't. Interesting. Now let's get those units, new units that have recently deployed, divided up. Of course, we have a glorious. Oh no, that's not the fucking the ideas. The national ideas cancelled, or the national spirits cancelling, is it? Oh, thank God, it's just the Civil War. <laughs> Words that have probably never been uttered before. Now, get into place. Be training up. Oh, a lot of our um, generals are actually just... Um, are actually RFP party members, yeah. The Cotton is the field marshal, we got, and we have Tirson and Shekarev. The other two are uh, white army generals. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, man. This is crazy, these black spikes. Anyway, did I, do I have to do the thing with Kamchatka again? No, I don't. Kamchatka is fine. Come on, game, you fucking fuck all to be doing all day to be doing it. Let's go. Oh, I think I think it was like the 24th of June that um that the that the tag switch happened. So hey, I was hoping it won't happen again. God, I hope it doesn't happen again. Alright, Ricky Company 3. Uh, yeah, just get me into this thing. Oh no, I lag spike before the daily tick. Fuck! What's this? We even have the fucking warlord mechanic. What's the new division about? How many men is that? 21,000. Alright. Tell you what, here's what I'm gonna do. I shall. Um, quit the game, uh, restart my computer, um, go through um, relaunching Hearts of Iron 4 through Steam, like making sure all the mod files are alright and all that kind of stuff. Go back to the 24th of, when, or like 24th of June or whatever in the 20s it was, and see if it's still happening. And if it is, I'll reload back to the 1st of June. We'll quickly annex them, we'll get all the land from Germany, and we shall um, obviously get the super vent. And uh, we'll have to call it a series there. God damn it. Naturally, like. My favorite my favorite warlord in our, in our first series back. My fucking bug starts happening. Alright, um, yeah, I shall be back soon. See you then.
the recording and thus the series has been saved. Thank you to Solstron on the Discord for the second West Rush War mod who suggested that I uninstall or at least disable the second West Rush War mod until we had unified. Everything seems to be just fine. Onwards. Everything's good with the recording. We're all good. Grand job. I think I already read that. Yeah, we are. I already read that. Fantastic. I was worried there for a second. I would have been very annoyed if um, our first series back, and like my favourite warlord to play as, Rodzevsky, we couldn't finish him off properly just because of a bug. That would have been very annoying. Now, who knows if the bug will resurface when we try to go for um, all of our former lands. Hmm. But until that day comes, we still have some. Uh, we still have two contenders. Well, I mean, I hope it'll just be one contender left by the time we, um, by the time 1971 rolls around. But hey, they could easily duke it out for those another six months. Now let's get arms, trucks, and artillery pieces. Very nice. Oh, the game is on mute. That's. I was wondering what was wrong. The game is muted. Yeah, of course. Ah, there we are. That's better. Ah, oh, that makes me happy now. Very good. No, oh, yes, our air force. We should probably. I was going to say we should probably get it in position. I don't think it can be any in position any more than it already is. Yeah. Pop those boosts again and reduce the deficit. Not the, not the deficit, but the budget. Oh, or not the deficit, not the budget, the debt. There we are. Only 164 million left. You always have a lot of stances, Rodzewski, mainly because you've got barely any uh, social welfare. Yeah, no pensions, no unemployment benefits, no minimum wage. <laughs> Bloody hell. Legal child labour. That's the worst part. Now, source of foreign materials. Increases uh, material procurement to progress by 10% at a cost of 100 million US dollars. Gain base stability minus 3%, political power minus 25. If we cannot find enough uranium to support our program domestically, we, we shall have to look farther afield. Agents, legal and otherwise, will be dispatched across the world to research and investigate both known and rumored uranium deposits. Whether we must buy the material, trade for it, or steal it, we will acquire it. The program must continue, and a bomb cares litter for, for where the material inside it comes from, indeed. I know, I know like, the, um... The conversion rate from, say, like, ore to, like, actual fizz-on material is, like, ridiculously low. Like, say, if you put, like, 100 tons of uranium, quote-unquote, out of a mine, like, you're going to have very, very little of that left by the time you actually get to putting it into the bomb. How fast do, do, tank, do the tank divisions train up? 1.04. And the infantry? 1.54. Interesting. Ah, uh, very nice. Enhanced industrial facilities and better research facilities. Lovely. Modern research facilities. Lovely. Plus 5% research speed. No, oh, this one. Ooh, production uh, efficiency cap and growth plus 10% and factory and dockyard output plus 15%. Absolutely lovely. Much better than this one. Now, to be fair, that, that one's not bad either, actually. It's this side that I don't like. That side, yeah. I don't know why you'd ever pick that side. Don't like it. Then I guess I, guess, I suppose this side is the concentrated. This side is dispersed. And even though I'd, I'd always pick dispersed in in the um, in Kaiserreich or Kaiser Redux, but I always pick the right hand side in the order. God, I'm happy that the recording is back on track. Now there we are. We can pump the rest of um, our annual surplus into our GDP, which is fantastic. Upgrades going well too. Oh, that's way too much. <laughs> that's way too much now, now that I see that there. Yeah, you can be reducing that down to that. Chase the sun. 
increases monthly progress gain by 3% at a yearly cost of 150 million US dollars. Our industrial expertise societal development will begin to slowly improve. Although it will be a long time before we can have before we have an operational nuclear weapon, we have successfully built the infrastructure necessary to ensure that we eventually will. Our laboratories and research facilities are constructed and secured. Our educational institutions are turning out scientists with the necessary skills. Our agencies have secured both domestic and foreign sources of fissile material. All that is left is time. When that day comes and we complete our first nuclear test, we can take pride both in our accomplishments and in the knowledge that Russia will at long last be free at long long last be free of outside interference indeed never another invasion also I've played that song twice now my bad now oh, there we are hmm we are gonna need a lot more tanks than that if we, if we want 40 widths of what we currently have yeah but at the same time though like 24 stack of 20 widths is more than enough to deal with the AI. How big is, is the Einheit's Pact? Very big. But they don't have the UK, which is the big one. Yeah, the rest is all whatever. Apart from Germany, of course. And down there, little puppets. It's Bormann, is it not? Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Well, things seem to be relatively stagnant between um, Omsk and uh, now it's called now it's called the West Siberian Western Russian disagreement. When it was the Ural disagreement, that's weird. Yeah, they, they're they, they're they're running out of men. They can't attack comfortably now. At the same time, I would really like some motorized divisions. How many trucks do I have? Ten thousand six hundred. I might start producing some trucks. Yeah, I want some. Uh, I want some trucks. Ooh, field hospital three is very nice. You can get cracky on field hospital fours. No, could do no. Never mind. Do the um, logistics four instead. We should probably research better trucks as well. We don't really have anything on tap though. Maybe just get use, use this one instead. Oh, 271 days, bruh. Put it a far piece away. And that's that's the uh, focus tree done. Yeah, they should really extend um, the the non-nuclear part of the focus tree to being like 21 days. 60 days is just ridiculous because now I'm left without a focus tree. 11% is not bad at all. That's actually really good, yeah. <laughs> I love how it's still being, being classed as moderate. Oh yeah, we're nearly, we'll be uh, ready to advance the development phase very soon. Ooh, our academic base, societal development will begin to improve as well. We haven't got, oh, we have got out the primary schooling. Very nice. Good. Oh yeah, we'll go up to innovative industries as well. Fantastic. Probably won't increase in that though. Damn, only one level of increase in um, in the army professionalism. That's sad. If you were to go to 1975, we probably would have gotten another increase though. Now advanced development phase. Do all of this stuff. Don't think we actually get to finish off all this because we are already at 25%. How is the infrastructure in the rest of the Far East? Should we maybe bump up some of that? Then again, the way we're currently doing infrastructure is really efficient. Like, we're only building where there's um, resources, and then we... Yeah, the rest is off. <laughs> There's no point. We build infrastructure where there's resources, and then we build civilian factories on top of that infrastructure. It's a good system. I like it. That's a really good province. It's the only reason to really get... Um, what is that? That's not Tajikistan. Is that Kurdistan? I believe that's Kurdistan. Yeah, that's Tajikistan. Yeah. Bishkek. And Pamir. Kurdistan? Yeah, Kurdistan. Really resource rich in that one province. Oh, 
Wow. I'm just not going to do anything, eh? That sucks. Well, we've kind of maxed out the army. Well, we, well, we haven't maxed out the army at all, but then. Um... Oh, could we, could we make our infantry 40 with right now? Oh, that means we do that. No, oh, it does. Elise. Yeah, the thing, the thing I do like about the Elite Infantry, though, is that they have, um... They have better stats than motorized. For some reason. Oh, actually, we couldn't, um... Do not have enough... Army experience. Annoying. Could we do it, though, if we have to? Ah, they won't have this. Wow. Wow. Alright, I mean, if these are destined to be the borders, then... And they're destined to be the borders. I think you can be focused kind of in and around Omsk. Kind of, we won't be bothered too much with all the stuff up here. They have a limited number of divisions, so there's no point really. The other two can be positioned here. Very simple. Just go up like that. Won't take much to get them all knocked out. Nah. Get into position. I highly doubt the borders are going to move much. Then again, they div. It's not just until the first of January they have. They still they have until like March or April or May, roughly. Radzewski's on the border. He's coming for that ass. Ooh, 10 T-64s a day. Again, it really should be T-62s and not T-64s, but whatever. Not, not gonna say it again. But I'm just kidding, I will say it again. Actually, yeah, I've, I've got no interest in um, motorized divisions. Shouldn't have bothered changing the ground. It's more important to get the AKs and RPGs. We'll march all the way to Kiev on foot if we have to. And we will. Now we'll pop those boosts again. Now. Oh! Didn't, oh, never mind. Never mind. I thought I just um, decreased the budget. No, we're all good. Wow. I'm surprised to see that we still have 13% consumer goods. Game, would you like to enlighten me as to how, as Vyatka, I got minus 22% consumer goods, yet somehow I'm still stuck with 13% as Radzevsky? Okay, it, it's really more like 8% as soon as we get rid of um, mass mechanization, but, like, what? It's ridiculous. Konstantin Steklov is not a good economy minister. I know Natsak economics are bad, but, like, that's really bad. Steklov needs to go. Yeah, that's not great at all. It's pretty much entirely coming from Steklov. If we got rid of Steklov and got rid of mass mechanization, we'd be fine. We'd be well clear of zero. Then again, I suppose with our current uh, social laws, if we didn't have some of our factories going to, to, going to uh, consumer goods, they'd absolutely just rise up in revolution. There'd be no stopping them. Nurchinsk mines is very much uh, needed, though. Yeah, if we didn't have that, we'd be in a bad place. 74% stability. Hmm. I can only imagine now once we've cored uh, Western Siberia and Western Russia, and um, 
and Karelia and that entire area, and then core all of Ukraine, Ostland, Moscovine, Caucasian, core all that stuff. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we were, <laughs> we we could very well just be at zero percent stability or even less. I wish there was a button to automatically convert liquid reserves into GDP instead of having to click it. Ooh, we got rid of the effect of purging the Supreme Council. Fantastic. Ooh, we're back up to 89%. Very nice. That's way better. Way better. And we can reduce our rubber imports. Fantastic. That'll help out so much. Yep. Yeah. God, I love RPG so much. It'd be cool if you can get more than a two-time scope on the RPG. The, R the range on the RPG, obviously, you know... Well, the range doesn't fall out, but the, the guidability of the rocket falls off, you know, in short order. But, you know, a four-time scope would not go astray. You could definitely make some nice shots with it. Yeah, though. Like, so much of our... Um, um, our general ship, would you say? Our army high command is made up of RFP numbers. Of course, it's ridiculous that a general can command 24 divisions. There isn't a man on the face of the earth that can, that can command 24 divisions accurately and well. Honestly, I'd prefer if... Um, I'd actually like to change that, that, that so that generals can only command um, a single division. I think Millennium Dawn does something very similar. Um, where like a field marshal can only control up to like three or so generals, and then the generals can only control up to a certain amount of divisions. Still unrealistic, but way less unrealistic. And yeah, that'll be pretty good. Obviously, we'd have a lot more generals, you know, and like things like Rodzewski integrating the um, the Tsarist and Cheetah and the um, and the Splitters and Magadan would be like a big event. I think it'd be very cool though if um, if say like let's say Vyatka reunified Western Russia. And then, um, and then, let's say Vyatka had accepted, um, had, had like pardoned Ma all of that. I nearly said Magadan, all of Samara's generals. And then the West Siberian Unifier defeats uh, Vyatka. I think it'd be really cool if you could bring over like all the generals that that was in like Western, like Vyatka, Western Russia, Vyatka into Radzievsky's regime, just like you did with um, all the generals of Cheetah. Now I know, of course, like in in the past, uh, the Tsarists and Cheetah had collaborated with. Um, Rodzelski, but I think it'd be ooh better industrial expertise, fantastic. But I think it'd be cool if like you know the two regimes could like establish communications and say and like if the war was going badly for Vyatka, they could flee to Rodzelski. Obviously, the Tsar wouldn't be because like that fits the whole national state name as well. Obviously, the Tsar would never be restored, but at least he wouldn't be you know executed at the hands of the West Siberian Unifier. Let's face, and let's face it, the West Siberian Unifier, if they're at war with Vyatka. Is either going to be Omsk or Kaganovich or Khrushchev because um, what's his face? Oh, um, not not Batov. Fucking your man, alcohol guy, that guy. I can't think of his name. Uh, what that? Yeah. God, who is it? Boris Yeltsin. So like um, Yeltsin and Batov can peacefully reunite with Vyatka. So if Vyatka is losing a war, it's going to be against either Kaganovich, Khrushchev, or um, Omsk. So yeah. Oh, 1971. Yeah, and nothing has changed. Pop that. Raise emergency reserves. How many is that? 150,000. Pop all that stuff. Invite Japanese industrial experts, and we'll get the electronics. Grand showdown, indeed. But yeah, that'd be very cool if you get all of Vyatka's and thus all of Samara's and say all of Berezniki's and all of the Order of St. George generals as Rodzevsky. Oh, that'd be amazing. Someone make a sub mod, please. That'd be absolutely incredible. And now that's all I can think about is Vyatka reunifying Western Russia. Peacefully getting Berezniki, peacefully getting the Order of St. George, integrating all of, um, oh, there is movement, integrating all of, um, Samara's generals. I don't think you can pardon Vologda's generals, yeah, I don't think you can. And then, collapsing in the face of West Siberia and all fleeing to Rodzewski, and you've got a colossal, like, literally, every element of the White Army is under Rodzewski. That would be amazing. Now, shipments, 
trucks and pieces. Very nice. Actually, no, not fifth asthma. Logistics. Yeah. So cancel the trucks. Yeah, cancel the trucks. Don't care. Get maintenance. Maintenance four. That would be amazing. Every element of the White Army under Rodzewski. Monarchists of both shades, you know, the Atka Cheetah, then the RF, then the RFP under, you know, the original RFP members of the Splitters. God, that'd be amazing. Amazing. Then you'd have uh, Berezniki, you'd have the Order of St. George, you'd have all of Samara. I reckon Samara and Rodzewski would get on well. Thoughts. Ooh, there is bushes being made though. I reckon they think I reckon they know that we're coming for them. Yes, yeah, I see now. Zykov is just ramping up the casualties. Racking up the casualties rather. Ramping up what works as well, I suppose. Western, established Western fortifications, yes. In Novosibirsk? Yeah, I guess, yeah, that works actually, yeah. It's bordering. I wish there were decisions at the, re at the um, like, regional and super regional stages to, like, gather up all the forts in your territory and place them along the borders. Of course, you could kind of exploit that, um, you know, just by building forts the entire regional and super regional time, then having, like, a load of um, forts, but, like, it would only go up to, like, level 4 or, say, something like that. That'd be really cool. Because otherwise, just sit there doing absolutely nothing. That's annoying. A waste of money. And time. And focuses. Oh? What's this? China modernizes. Very good. Good for you, China. Yes, the conference. China must unite against its greatest enemy. Oh, nice, we got all of our manpower in, all of our reserves. 500,000 in reserve, fantastic, and new, lovely new factories. Gorgeous. Bump that up. Is this the begin the, uh... No, it's not. Four, uh, four to five fallback lines, yes, do that. More combats and skirmishes? Yes, 389,000. You've royally screwed it. Amsk, probably. I would say Amsk should have had it in the bag. But Zykov had a load of men. If he'd have held, he would have been fine. He would have bled arms dry. But no. Kalapshevo. Sounds like an interesting place. Interesting name. Cool name. Kalapshevo. Not a whole lot of people living there. <laughs> 138,000. Wilderness. Arctic wilderness. Good song, this. What is this? 
Yeah, that's me and you, Soviet Pioneer song. Very good song. But all right, lads. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'm I'm very happy that the uh, series was saved by just uninstalling uh, the second West Russian War mod. But all right, lads. I shall see you down in the comment section of this video. I shall see you in the next video. Shout out to our patron Ryan McCready. See you then.